So in part A, we want to normalize the wave function. So the wave function, as given by the problem, is equal to this expression. And then you'll see that in chapter 2, this is actually a solution for the Schrodinger equation for the case of the direct delta potential. So you'll see where this comes from in the next chapter. So now let's say we already know what the wave function is, and we want to normalize this. So how do we do it? So when we say we want to normalize this wave function, it means we want to restrict this integral to be equal to 1. So what we're going to do is that we're going to plug this expression into this integral, and then we're going to arrive at an expression that would allow us to deduce what this constant a should be, which would allow us to normalize this. So you see that we have the absolute value square, and when we're taking the absolute value square of a complex expression, so let's say we're taking the absolute value square of a complex expression, this is equal to the complex expression itself multiplied by its conjugate. So for the absolute value square of the wave function, that means I will be taking the original wave function and then I will be multiplying it by its conjugate. So we have the conjugate of a. This term over here is just uh, entirely real, so it, it's, it is not affected by the conjugate. And then we have the conjugate of this e term, which is just taking away the negative sign, dx. So in, your, in case you don't know why the conjugate of this term is just taking away the negative sign, you can consider Euler's formula, e to the power of i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then when we take the conjugate of this term, uh, when we take the conjugate, we just flip the sign of the imaginary term. So it becomes cosine theta minus i sine theta. And this is actually equal to cosine negative theta plus i sine negative theta, and which is equal to e to the power of i negative theta. So when you take the conjugate of uh, e to the power of i something term, when you take the conjugate, you just take away the negative sign, as you can see here. Both of these are different by a negative sign. So uh, this is what you get for the conjugate. So now we're ready to combine both of these terms. So for the a, they come together and they give us this expression, the absolute value square of the constant a. These two, they just multiply together to give you e to the power of negative lambda absolute value x dx. And then for these two terms, they just cancel out because uh, uh, this is just 1 over this term. So both of these just multiply together to give you 1. So now all we have to do is just to focus on this expression. So continuing with this, we have a square. And then note that this term over here is symmetrical. So it's symmetrical on the right-hand side. Uh, so it's symmetrical about, about the, the vertical axis. So the right-hand side is the same as the left-hand side. So if I'm integrating from negative infinity all the way to 0, uh, this the area from this section is equal to integrating from 0 all the way to infinity. So instead of writing this integral from uh, as from infinity to negative infinity to positive infinity, I can just write this as 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity. So 2 times the area of integrating within this region. And it's uh, since the area from this region is going to be the same as the area from this region, I can just disregard the region from negative inf infinity to 0 and then just put a 2 over here, because both sides are the same. And then now, uh, the reason that, uh, that I've done this, why I've done this is because there's this uh, absolute value sign over here. And now since we're going from 0 to infinity, which is entirely in the positive region, we can just get rid of the absolute value sign because it doesn't change the value since we're always in the positive region now. And so now we're ready to integrate this. So we have e to the power of negative lambda x divided by negative 2 lambda from 0 to infinity. So when you substitute infinity, you get e to the power of negative infinity, which is just equal to 0. And then when you substitute 0, you get 1. So you get minus 1 of negative 2 lambda. So these cancel out, these cancel out. So you see the absolute value of a squared divided by lambda is equal to 1. So this is the requirement that we impose in order to normalize the wave function. So this implies that the absolute value square of the constant a is equal to lambda. And then now a, we can choose it to be the simplest form. We can just choose it to uh, be composed of enti uh, an entirely uh, real component. So there are no imaginary components. So we, a can actually be a complex number. There could be an imaginary component, but uh, we can always choose whatever uh, value we want a to be as long as it's normalized. So we, of course we choose the most simple case where a is only a real, uh, where a only has a real component. So there are no imaginary components. So this is the answer. This is what we're going to choose for a, and then with this choice for a, we would have essentially normalized this wave function. So that's how you do part A.
Now for part b, we need, we need to find the expected value of x and x squared. So to find the expected value of x, we just consider this expression. And then we just plug in the wave function. And then note that we also have this absolute value square of the wave function, which is, as we found uh, earlier, is equal to this. So the expected value of x requires us to solve this integral. But then note that this term over here is actually an odd function. So an odd function is something that looks like this. So you can imagine for an odd function, if you integrate a certain amount over here on the right-hand side, it's going to be cancelled out by a corresponding region in the negative side. So if you're integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity, the contributions from the negative part is going to be cancelled out by the contributions from the positive part. So in the end, this whole thing is just going to be equal to zero. So this is the expected value of x. And uh, just recall, this is because this term here is an odd function, which behaves in such a way. So the next thing we need to find is the absolute uh, is the expected value of x squared. So this time it is not an odd function, so we can't use the trick that we that we use for the expected value of x. So now let's just substitute in the term for uh, the wave function, and then once again I'm just gonna instead of going from negative infinity to positive infinity, I'm just gonna write from zero to infinity and put a two over here, and this is going to be the wave function squared, and then once again because we're within the positive region I can just take away the absolute value sign from the wave function. So now we need to evaluate this expression so I might as well just pull out the a squared to the outside. So a squared and then 0 to infinity. So now we need to integrate this. So in order to integrate this we're going to use integration by parts. So let us just now focus on this integral. So if x squared multiplied by this e term. So in order to do integration by parts, I'm going to retain this x squared term, and then I'm going to uh, integrate this term. So integrating this, we get this expression, evaluate it from 0 to infinity, and then minus the integral from 0 to infinity, and now I'm going to differentiate this. So this is just a procedure for performing integration by parts. So dx. So here I'm just retaining this term. And here you can see that if you substitute in infinity, you get e to the power of negative infinity, which completely overrides this infinity square, so it's just equal to 0. And then when x is equal to 0, you get 0 multiplied by 1 divided by some constants, which is just equal to 0. So this whole term is 0. We can ignore this. We have negative signs here that cancel out, and we also have a 2 here that cancels out. So in the end, we have 1 over lambda multiplied by this integral. And so now we need to do integration by by parts again. So we retain the x and then we integrate this term. e to the power of negative 2 lambda x divided by negative 2 lambda evaluate it from 0 to infinity. And then minus negative uh, 0 to uh, positive infinity. Now we differentiate this term which is just equal to 1 and then we retain this term divided by negative 2 lambda dx. So continuing with this, so don't forget we have a 1 over lambda outside and then for this term, when we substitute in infinity, you get infinity multiplied by e to the power of negative infinity. So once again, this exponential term completely overrides this, so you just get 0. And then you minus, x, uh, when you minus a term where you substitute x into this expression, so you just get 0 uh, multiplied by 1, which is just, of course, equal to 0. So this entire term is just equal to 0. And here, once again, you, the negative signs, they cancel out. So I have a 1 over 2 lambda multiplied by an integral from 0 to infinity. And so now this expression is easy to calculate. So we have e to the power of negative 2 lambda x divided by negative 2 lambda. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to infinity. <clears throat> so substituting in infinity, that's just equal to 0. And then substituting in 0, you just get 1. So you get minus 1 over negative 2 lambda. So in the end, you get 1 over 4 lambda to the power of 3. So this is the value of the integral that we've calculated. So now we're ready to substitute this value into back into this expression. So we have our 2. Uh, don't forget the constant a is equal to the square root of lambda. So a squared is just equal to lambda. And then this term, this integral we just found, is equal to 
one of four lambda q. So you can see that this two cancels out. This gives you lambda square. So in the end, you get one over two lambda square. So this is your answer. This is your expected value of x squared.